Hey, it's Kurt Thompson here. Welcome to Trophy Player Street once again. It's been a while, right? The question, how long does it take to progress, achieve, improve note per note after you hit the high C? How long does it take on average? At some point, you probably have asked yourself that question, or maybe an instructor, or maybe a performer that you admire. Hey, Tom, you know, I can play a high D now, but dang, I've been stuck on the high D for about a year. How long before I get up to the double C? So this video, we're going to discuss my experience on how long it takes a typical person, once they've gotten to high C, to get to double C. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. And the answer has uh, many facets and variables. Um, one answer being sometimes never. Another answer almost right away. Uh, and then everything in between. So first off, uh, we're not going to talk about what it takes and how long it takes to go from low C to middle C, middle C to high C. Um, I'm using high C as a benchmark. You finally have arrived at this note. And to keep it real, baby, uh, Bach 1. Trying to keep it real for you guys, because I know a lot of you guys are in high school or college, and maybe you're still playing a 3C. Ooh, feel sorry for you on that one. Maybe, unless you want to play fourth chair of the Chicago Symphony, hey, play the 3C. Good, good for you. Uh, if that's your, if that's all you aspire to be as a fourth chair player in some symphony, then play the 3C or do the one if you can. This would even be better if you want to play fourth chair of the Chicago Symphony. This is the Bach one the largest of all mouthpieces. But for a lot of you guys uh, that do play on all these Bach mouthpieces and these large cup mouthpieces, because it makes you feel a little bit good about yourself, you know, that you can tell people, well, I can't do this. <laughs> well, I can't do that because I play on the big, big, big Bach 3C mouthpiece. And you, my friend, play on that Shoki 13A 4A, right? See, that's why you can hit that double C. But wait a minute. Are you watching carefully? Are you watching real carefully what I did? Did you see me swap out this big Bach? one mouthpiece for a Shoki 13A 4A. Go back and rewind. Watch real quick. Notice there was no switch out. But yet, I went up to double C like it was nothing. It really was nothing. How'd that happen? And how long does it take for you out there watching me to get to where I am right now? Well, as I alluded to in the beginning of this video, it varies. For example, uh, I guess one of the t most talked about trumpet players, it seems like it always comes up in, in, in videos of mine, especially when I start talking about high, is a guy named Wayne Bergeron. And they're saying, Kirk, can you play his stuff from some movie, whatever it was, The Incredibles. Oh, geez, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. It'd be really hard. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. It gets a little irritating, but, you know, I did check on this guy, and, and sources seem to corroborate that when he was in elementary school and he picked up a French horn, I guess he started on French horn, he played double C. Then he went over to cornet or trumpet, and he was playing double Cs. So, uh, from what I've heard, he had to learn how to play a low. So, there's one answer. Some people start off right around the double C range, and we're not talking about high C. Let's get this straight, guys. A lot of you confuse the double C with high C. It's not a double C. I don't know why so many of you call that high C note a double C. It is not. The first C that you come to above the treble clef staff is what we refer to 
especially people in the know, as high C. The C above that is called a double high C. It's not another high C, it's called double high C. <coughs> Bam! Can I do it without kissing it off? <coughs> of course I can. I can do that double C any which way I want to. I own that note. It's in my back pocket. I've owned it for a long, long, long time. I can do whatever I want with it, however I want, whenever I want. So, so you got guys like that. You got guys like Maynard Ferguson. How many of you are in eighth grade going to ninth grade? I just had a, an awesome student graduate recently. Uh, my youngest student, you can watch his videos. It's kind of up in, in, the, up in the tall part of the order here because it was recent. He started this 16 week course when he was 14 and just turned 15 when he graduated and was sporting a nice, pretty solid E above high C. There's another guy. Are you recognizing some of these people? This guy. When he was 14, he was playing professional lead trumpet in Montreal. I kid you not, I'm not exaggerating. My guess is at 14, he might have had a better range than I do now. Um, I, I haven't heard him play at 14, but I, I bet it was probably close. Here's another guy that was amazing, that had, now he, he practiced, but it came naturally to him. It came easy to him. You know, we all practice hard. He practiced hard, but it came very easy for him. So at 14 years of age, it's, it's almost sounds like it's made up, right? But he was playing professional lead trumpet at age 14. So these are the exceptions. So now that I've told you about these guys, you kind of need to pull them out of your head so you don't worry about it, okay? Because for the rest of us that aren't blessed, no, blessed. Maynard Ferguson, blessed. Maurice Andre, blessed. It's a good thing these guys didn't do something else besides trumpet because they are, that's where their real talent is. What if they had got into accounting or become a lawyer? Maybe they would have just been a so-so CPA or a so-so accountant, never knowing that their real true genius and talent was trumpet. Luckily for them and for us, they got into trumpet playing. So these are the exceptions. Almost guaranteed you are not going to be like them. I'm not like them. And if you already are, I doubt, I doubt we'd be talking right now. And I doubt you'd be listening to me. You're doing something else. So now... If you're a typical person, and what is a typical person? I'm just going to say average. Not above average, not below average, not prodigies and talented people like this. But you're a good player. you got kind of a good noggin on your shoulders. Maybe you take a few lessons. And I'm assuming that maybe you're, let's just say that you're in high school right now. Maybe you're in college. Uh, maybe you're an adult trumpet player that does it for fun. Maybe you make $200,000 a year. And you're a trial attorney, and but by night you like to get out your trumpet and play in a couple of bands or something like that. But what's what's kind of gnawing at you is that over and over and over again, uh, you've dibbled and dabbled to try to improve your range, and it's coming slow like molasses, slow, slow, like you're moving in slow motion. You do all the things that you've heard people tell you to do. Me too. I told you to do what? Practice on your long tones, which could include some pedal tones. Definitely do some lip slurs, lip flexibilities, some lip trills, right? And to actually try to play high. It's, it's always funny to me when people want to play high, they shy away from it. So when you ask them when's the last time you'd really try to go for a double C. Um, I think last year, it kind of hurts. So last year, yeah, I tried. No, at least you're doing those three things, right? Long tones, pedal tones, which could be part of that. Lip slurs and lip flexibilities like lip trills. And actually trying to play high. Um, you have to be, at least be doing those three things. So let's say that you're doing those three things. And it's coming slow like molasses. You've been on a high D for five years. And the high D is good, but just like crap, you go to E flat and it all goes down the toilet. So let's talk about this. Uh, on average, how long does it take to go from high C to double C? 
Now I'm going to throw out some just some generalities and for your situation it could be right on target, it could be a little bit miss on the high end, a little bit miss on the low end. Let me repeat again, some people never make it to double C. There is a certain amount of um, endowment, if you will, maybe talent if you want to call it. I call it more like a physical endowment. Uh, just the setup of your face, your teeth, um, your lips and everything, maybe your lungs, your oral capacity. Uh, for example, my I have a kind of a natural endowment that's kind of a negative one. My tongue is a little bit too big for my mouth. And a lot of times, uh, sometimes we'll, in speaking, it sounds like I slur my words or have a little on it. My tongue, my dentist has told me this, several dentists have told me this, and even a speech therapist a long ago said, my tongue is a little bit too large for my oral cavity. That kind of sucks, you know, that's why I'm not going around doing public speeches <laughs> and getting, you know, $100,000 like the Clintons, you know. Uh, uh, I'd like to be able to do that. But my special endowment has a negative and a positive. This tongue, got a big tongue, I got a thick tongue and a big tongue and a long tongue inside kind of a smaller oral cavity. As a result, it's all smashed up in there. So when I talk, if I'm not careful, sometimes it will sound like I'm chewing on a bunch of marbles when I try to talk. Uh, can't help it. That's just, that's just the way I'm born. But the silver lining of that, the positive is that because of this smaller oral cavity that I have and this huge tongue, that gets in the way of my speaking a lot of times, guess what? That enables me to really have amazing compression for playing a brass instrument. I don't have a lot of, a lot of space in here and a small tongue and uh, very difficult to compress the air like some people. I have the opposite. So I'm really kind of happy about that. Uh, unhappy, you know, especially if I had to make, you know, do the... <laughs> A state of the Union address. I mean, I would be a little bit kind of fearful of that um, just because of my natural setup. But if I had to go play the trumpet somewhere, I would be thankful for um, how I am built. So for you, you might be more like me or you might be the opposite. Maybe you are quick tongued and you can do all the, the poems and, you know, all those um, tongue twisters and you can sail through them at, at um, amazing speeds crystal clear speech and tongue. Possibly you might have a smaller tongue and a larger oral cavity, which would result in very clear, sharp, uh, pointed speech. Uh, just, you know, like you hear people on TV and the radio. That could also be a slight detriment when you're playing a brass instrument. You know, you might have a little bit more of a challenge trying to compress that air. It doesn't mean you can't overcome it. So think about these things. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk in terms of generality. So from high C to D, if you're working on the right stuff. Now I'm going to plug my 16-week course because, as you may have seen my other video, that's kind of popular here on YouTube. It's called the Top Three Ways um, to Be Able to Play Higher, or some, some some title with that effect. And I go through what I just talked to you about: long tones, lip service, trills, and practicing playing high. At some point, you're going to plateau up on that and you're not going to be able to kind of budge. You're going to get too used to that. And so for most people trying that, and the reason you're going to be trying that is because that is what most private trumpet teachers will tell you, most private trombone teachers will tell you, and on and on and on. When you get to college, it's the same song and dance. They're going to say, do uh, Kokoni, do um, Schlossberg. Uh, do irons, all this kind of stuff, you know, your lips, your lip flexibilities, do Claude Gordon, you know, long tones and pedal tones, you're, you're going to hear a lot of that, and you're going to try it, and uh, time after time after time, you're going to go for it, and you might get a little bit of results, so let's just agree right now, that if you started today, and you had a high C, to go to would take three to six months. On average. Now, maybe you're raising your hand and say, hey, Kurt, I got it after one month. Okay, well, good for you. On average, especially if you're kind of a young adult, I'm not talking about a 10-year-old kid. If you're in high school or college 
or older, and you just start focusing on increasing your range, and you're at a high C, and your high C sounds good like mine, and you're wanting to go to high D, but that high D does not sound good. It sounds like a squeak, or a little bit more than a squeak, but not, not worthy of playing in any ensemble. Write down right now three to six months to get you a D. And if you get it in three months, you know, pat yourself on the, on the shoulder and uh, bow down to these guys, okay? You need to honor them. They are the gods of trumpet. I didn't say they're the gods of jazz. You know, there's some other jazz innovators. Uh, well, this, it's hard to beat this guy for classical. He actually is the innovator for the Baroque period. I don't know if you know that Maurice Andre revitalized the whole Baroque trumpet deal back in the 50s. So he, he's, he did innovate a good portion of our classical trumpet. Uh, this guy is the best trumpet player in the world, bar none. Is he the best at Dixieland or the best at uh, pure freeform jazz improvisation? Maybe not, but all around playing this instrument, uh, he's the best. Hasn't been beaten. You need to pay some uh, homage to them if you were able to go to high D in three months. Now, from high D to high E, it's going to get a little bit harder. Here's a rule of thumb. The, the higher you go, the slower things get as far as improvement. Why? Because you're uh, uh, physically, physics and the acoustical nature of the horn, you're going to start to run out of highway. You're going to start to run out of road. There's only so high we can go on this thing um, just based on the physical mechanics of everything. But just only so high we can go. So uh, let's talk about going high D, high to high E. You got a high D, how long to go to high E? I'm going to say roughly it's going to be kind of about the same. So once you've arrived at high D, now I'm just pulling this out of thin air. Maybe I might crack a note here or there. A lot of times I'll play E one and two because it comes out flat. But uh, to go, you know, notice how nice that sounded, high D, I mean high E. Okay. If you want it sounding nicely like that, where you can use it in an ensemble or a solo, or show off here on YouTube, figure three to six months. Okay, so that would be about six months to a year to go from high C to E, typically, if you're just kind of messing around on your own, or you're doing the typical university trumpet major track. If you start as a freshman, maybe by the end of the year, you might be around high E, which would not, not be too bad. High E to F is a half step, but doggone it if that F can be quite squirrely. To run E. Okay, pretty nice solid E, or E and F. That F actually was not too bad either. Uh, it's give or take, but I'm going to say you're going to add more time now to get up to that F. The F happens to be a sticking point. It's not a break note or your break, typically. It just happens to be a sticking point that you got to push through. And I'm going to say for a lot of folks, it might take you six months to nine months to get to that F. Some of you might be a year. Remember, get these guys out of your head. The people that I mentioned that had automatic high notes to begin with. Get that out of your head. Those are the exceptions. We are almost all not like these guys. Just not like them. They're the exception. So if you have an E and you're trying to get the E, but the E comes out a little squirrely, or let's say that you got it at home, but then you're, you're in your jazz band, you're going to play, and you can never get it to happen without it being out of tune or squirrely or just not centered, with the right amount of focus and the right instruction and dedication, it'll probably take you six months to nine months and maybe pushing it about a year to get to that F. Okay, now let's say that you have the F. Am I on the F? Yeah. All right.
right, those notes are locking in for me, and I'm just kind of surprised. I'm on this huge bathtub of mouthpiece still, you know. I'm not on my mouthpiece, my normal mouthpiece. Okay, so the F came in. I almost overshot it. The G came in just sweet, the double G. Double high G. Why double high G? Low G. We can't go any lower than that. That's a middle G. That's a high G. If we double it, double high G or double G or double G. That's not, there's not two high G folks on the horn. High G is sits right on top of the staff. It may not seem that high for us and some people don't want to call it high G, but the fact of the matter is, uh, theoretically, music theory, using music theory, it is a high G on the staff and a double high G an octave higher. Okay, now we're getting into where people get really frustrated and irritated. To go from F to G is a super duper jump. It's like jumping you know, through um, hoops backwards and backflips and twists and everything else. And for some of you, you might be about ready to encounter a break, what's known as a break. That's where the lips don't vibrate as well. You're kind of acoustically, acoustically in your lips and on the horn hitting Kind of like a dead zone, a dead spot. You're just not getting any reception. And uh, so sometimes F sharp, G, we're talking double F sharp, double G, double A flat, double A, B flat, right around that vicinity, almost 99% of all trumpet players, when they get up there, will have some kind of a break. When you factor that in, plus the fact that we are now dangerously close to the end of upper register, I call the end of upper register double IG. And starting at double a high A flat, I call that extreme upper register. So double G is, um, you know, a good solid upper register. Notice that at the very end of upper register. And then we go into extreme. There is an extreme upper register. Everything above that double G, I call extreme upper register playing. Most people don't play up there. Most people can't get those notes. Um, just, just the way it is. But you can hear a lot of people play the double G and a little bit below. You need to give yourself one year of dedicated practice to 18 months to go from that F to double G. F to double G. It's just going to take that long, folks. Unless you happen to get with a very highly skilled teacher who's used to working with people wanting to play higher. Um, I don't really see anybody in the room that, that kind of fits that description. But if you happen to get with somebody who has a tremendous amount of track record, history, experience, and students touting the fact that this teacher was able to help them get higher quicker, well then you need, to, you need to run and grab a hold of that teacher and get going. So there are some methods that can expedite your ability. I'm talking to you as if you're just trying to do stuff that the normal trumpet teacher at the college level or in the local community is helping you out with. Long tones, working on your breathing, pedal tones, Schlossberg, Cocconi, Airflow, you name it, lip drills, it's going to take you a year to a year and a half to get um, to get up there to that double G like that. That's just the way it is. Okay, now let's move on from, let's say that you've got the double G and you've listened to some of my stuff, watched some of my live stuff, watched me mess around on the horn, and then heard some of my um, recording session of, of me playing some Maynard or Doc Severinsen. And you go, wow, I'd like to be able to play that, but I don't have double A's and double C's. So to get up and play a lot of Maynard, you really do need to have more than just the top double G as your ceiling, because you're going to be playing on the skin of your teeth uh, just after about half a song. So you have to have more range. To go from double G to double A on your own or with a typical instructor who doesn't specialize in range and amateur coaching, uh, I would suggest, and this is, um, um, I'm being modest here, but probably 18 months to two years.
hate to hate to kind of burst your bubble, but if you have a double G and you want to get a nice solid double A, and you're not working with someone who's a specialist, some again someone who has been down this road with a lot of students, a lot being hundreds, and you're working with a guy or a gal who has a lot of academic accolades behind their name, and they're at a university or a college or something like that. You're going to spend 18 months to two years to, to take their what they're telling you to do. In fact, they probably will tell you not to even worry about it. That you need to you need to focus on making music, son. I mean, you're never going to play those notes. 99% of all notes you play are up to high C, and that's it. Yeah, that's kind of a lot of bullshit, isn't it? We all know that that's not really true. And even if it were, if it were true, who wants to be the average? Who wants to be the you know the John Boy and the average group of trumpet players that can just play up to high C. Not me. Maybe not you. But you're going to hear that. And you try to go higher than that. Uh, a lot of these people, they have advanced degrees that really can't play that well and that are just regurgitating with their uh, professor when they got their DMA told them. They're going to probably start to, you know, try to tone you down. You don't really need a double A. You need to focus on this nice, wonderful Tony Plogue concerto for trumpet a cappella. Uh, that's what they're going to probably try to tell you. Yet, if you still persist and you want to get up to the double G, I would say give yourself 18 months to two years and it might happen for you. Ooh, why did I say it might happen for you? Well, here's the rub. Uh, if you're not getting advice from someone who can do it, remember the people you're likely talking to can't do what I'm doing for you right now. On this big mouthpiece or actually any mouthpiece if you're getting advice from someone who can't do it but they're operating on theory you might be kind of out in the weeds my friends so it might take you 18 months with a lot of persistence a lot of elbow grease a lot of hard work burn the midnight oil really working this thing and doing everything right based on what they told you which is the old standard protocol i'll say it again long tones lip slurs flexibilities trying to play high that kind of stuff yeah, so 18 months to two years, but you may not get to that double A. Okay, so let's, just for the sake of this video, let's assume that you did get to the double A. And so now you're at double A and, you've, and you realize that you would love to be able to play the double C because a lot of Maynard stuff has double C. A lot of the Bill Chase stuff has double C. Um, so what big, big fat band stuff has some double Cs. Uh, Ron McConnell. So there, there are some highfalutin charts out there, rock charts, um, Al Jarreau stuff, maybe Michael Jack. There's all kinds of stuff that might have that double C that you would love and dream to be able to put as a little cherry on top of uh, your banana split. Hey everybody, I'm Kurt Thompson, trumpet player, brass teacher, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself in case you've never heard of me. Um, I make trumpet videos, lesson videos, also quite a lot of brass playing pedagogy and instruction and I help out quite a lot of people and I've been doing it almost all for free all these years since 2007. What is that? 10 years. Look at my channel on YouTube. You, all you got to do is search Kurt Thompson and I come up right away. I have a thousand videos plus on YouTube all free. done in the last 10 years and I need help. It's gotten to the point where I've had to reschedule lessons. It dawned on me a couple of months ago when I was rescheduling yet another lesson to finish up a video on YouTube and I thought to myself, wait a minute, I just shifted a student, a paying student to a few days later in order to finish up a video that's going to be free on YouTube. No money. Mr. Ching, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting here. So I want to keep bringing awesome content to you. I want to improve my content, improve my equipment. I want to bring higher quality everything to you guys. This cool idea called Patreon. Patreon is just an amazing tool because it allows you guys to get involved with me in creating content. Patreon simply just says, hey, help out Kurt a little bit. It's an every month kind of thing, and you're gonna help him spend more quality time 
help them buy better equipment, be able to do better things that you already like. You're just gonna see better content from Kurt Thompson. That's me. So take a look at this, take a look at this new idea called Patreon. I want to be able to keep doing this. I need your help. If you like what I've been doing so far and I've proven it, you've a thousand videos on YouTube kind of prove it, right? If you like it, you want to see me keep doing this, I need your help. But the cool thing is I want you to be a part of the process. And I'm offering some cool perks. They call them rewards here on, on Patreon. Things like mentioning you in a video, putting your name in the credits on a video, having you meet up with me and chat with me in a video. Wouldn't that be cool? Having you suggest a topic, having you suggest something for me to play, um, having you suggest something for my next professional official video. I'm bringing you the best of myself on this instrument and I really want your help. I hope you can appreciate and I want you to be a part of this process. can't do it so I'm gonna skip B flat B and just go to the C so you got the double A it's a pretty rock-solid double A for the most part and you'd like to be able to uh, go up to the double C which you heard me play at the beginning of this video um, okay a couple things can happen if, if you keep following that let's say that you're out of college now and you keep following your advice that Joe Blow gave you um, at, let's just say that you're at Eastman and J you study with James Thompson. You know, he's the James Thompson guy is real crazy about mouthpiece buzzing, right? And actually, I'm not crazy about it, but I do believe in mouthpiece buzzing. Although for my students, we use it in a different way for building strength and for building range. But still, you know, mouthpiece buzzing, good. Uh, James Thompson, I've heard, is really into that. Uh, but let's say that you study with him at Easton and you forked out 100000 and you got your trumpet performance degree there. And you got your double A. Now, if you want to keep following his type of advice, which is an academic type of advice, good all around stuff, uh, but he's going to tell you to work on your breathing, diaphragmatic breathing in your airflow and open up your throat. Oh, don't close down. Oh, open, open, free air. He's going to, he talks all about that, all that stuff. I, I know a lot more about these guys than you think that I do. Okay. I know exactly what his curriculum is. And, and many others very very much like him at that at that level at the university. So you keep following the syllabus that he gave you um, after. It could be that you never get to the double C, a usable double C. You could get to an incidental double C. You know what that is? That's typically what you hear jazz improv guys do, uh, even famous ones. And this I call it an incidental double C because it's not a usable double C. It's when they're really um, eating this guy. Let me see if I can get it for you. They're eating, I call it eating the mic. You've seen it. They've got their horn up here and they eat the mic and they're playing a couple of licks. <coughs> there you go, double C, baby, boom. They're eating the mic. It comes out kind of loud, loud maybe the audience, but we know, trumpet players know there's something missing, that edge that thickness, that electricity, that brilliance, that power, that natural power is missing. And so a lot of these jazz trumpet players that don't really own and have the double C will get what I call an incidental double C. You just heard me kind of do it. It's probably close. Yeah. Something like that. That's not a real double C, but when you put it in the mic and you eat that mic and it blares through the auditorium or the clubhouse venue, people might go, wow, that guy can also play some high notes. No, not really. Take that microphone away and put him in a group of 18 people where he's got a lead and then play the double C, you won't ever hear him. He will not be heard. He does not own that note. It's possible that maybe you might end up with an incidental double C that if you were in a on small ensemble or a jazz ensemble or you're taking the second book in a big ensemble but your mic and you're eating that mic that you could throw in a couple double c's but they would be what i call incidental not real double c's uh, you're definitely not going to sound like him 
he's got an awesome double C, and you're not going to sound like him. He's got an amazing double C. So you're going to have to switch gears and get with someone who you can look at and investigate and go, wait a minute. For decade after decade, this guy consistently plays awesomely in the upper register and just always seems to have double C's and beyond. Then you look at his students. Wow, this guy's students has gained four notes, five notes. This guy gained an octave. This guy can play a double C. You have to find somebody like that who is a specialist on the brass instrument. This could also go for trombone players who would love to be able to get up into the Bill Waltress range. Um, who would love to be able to play smoothly like Dave Steinmeier, who would love to have the power and the pop and the punch of the Carl Fontana, right? Uh, well, you're not going to get to that level by doing your university curriculum and continue it after you've already got your, your degree, whether it's low brass or trumpet. So let's kind of add it up. What did I say? Three to six months, maybe to go from high C to, to, to D. Three to six months from D to E. From E to F, longer, right? What did I say? Six months, nine months, you got to add it all up. And so where are we right there? Let's just take the longest of each one. So six and six, that's a year. Nine months, let's say we're at a year and a half to get to the F. And then I, what did I say? Like a year or a year and a half to get to the double G. So now we're at two, two and a half years. And then I said as much as two years to go to the double A. So from, let's boil it down to say that probably on average to go from a high C to a double A, you're probably looking at four years and, and lots of luck. Especially if you're studying with your, your you know, local, local private lesson teacher in the community, or you're studying with Let's say James Thompson, who by all appearances seems to be a great guy, plays great, great classical. He's innovated some good stuff with mouthpiece fussing. I'm not taking away anything from him that way, but I am lumping him into the group of that tend to run a similar track for most of their students. So, I mean, it, it doesn't deviate too much from Eastman to Juilliard to, uh, what's another one, uh, School of Music I'm thinking of. Um, it's just, it's coming, it's not, um, I, I'm not thinking of it right now. Uh, but anyway, not, just other School of Music like that that are kind of whole pile, whole high profile and conspicuous, they don't deviate a whole lot. It's from what they were telling one trumpet player, if you go to the next school like that, like Yale School of Music, uh, you're probably going to get the same similar type of stuff. From double A um, on up to double C, those guys I don't think are really going to help you. They can't do it themselves. Now they might have that incidental jazz, you know, jazz trumpet double C that I just demonstrated, right? They're not going to have this guy's double C. They're not. So you're going to have to get with somebody that can help you out, someone who is focused and has a track record of being able to play those notes and teach others how to play it. But if we add it all up, for you right now, just quickly want to know, it's going to take you four years to go from high C up to double A. And likely you can probably get up there. Double A to double high C, iffy. You may never get to double C. Um, or it may, if you're lucky, maybe it comes out to be an incidental double C, one that you could use when you eat the mic. You know, it comes out like a little squeal. But to the audience, it might seem loud because it's blaring through the speakers. But you and I both know it's not a real double C. But at least you got something you can pull out of your hat and use. So to get from double A to double C, um, if you're really working it hard, I would say let's plan on somewhere between three years in four years. If you haven't got with somebody that knows what they're doing, but you're working hard, you, you're, you're stubborn as an ox, and you're just focusing and you're just killing yourself, uh, I would say you might look into it. Let's plan on three to four years. You've got the double A, and it could be with a little bit of luck 
and a lot of dedication and the right mix of practicing and rest, you could get to the double C, a usable double C in three years, maybe four years after you have a solid double A. So if you add it all up from high C to double C and one that loud, that usable, that on command, you own it. That is your baby. You own it. It's got your name written on it. Seven or eight years. Okay. I'm giving you the real deal. I'm not sugarcoating it. Seven to eight years. Sounds like a lot of time, but if you're 19 years of age and you're working hard, and if you think at 19 by 26 or 27, you got you can do what I just did on command. Hey, the world is your oyster. You know, it really is. Now, let me play my course. If you would like to shorten that time frame up a little bit or a lot of it, you might want to go check out some of the stuff I have at my website, trumpetsizzle.com. I'm Kurt Thompson, trumpetsizzle.com. Maybe it's a knack, maybe it's a gift, maybe it's a little bit of luck, but I've had quite a lot of students work with me and get good results. Now, they're not going to get double C in a week, but a lot of them have got double C in four months. So um, now was it as loud as this? Not really, but a lot of them have got their incidental double C out in four or five months. Some of them have finally got up to F and double G in four months. So it just depends, but I, I kind of have a knack or this ability to help others improve their range. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. So I'm Kurt Thompson. I hope you found this useful. What is the recap? Recap? Four years to go from high C to double A. Let's give it another three years to four years from double A to double C. We're talking about a rock solid, big, usable, heard at the end and at the back of a big auditorium, double C, unmiked. Seven years to eight years to high C to double C. Keep that in, keep that figure in your, in your brain. High C to double C, seven to eight years, and you probably will own this note. You need to maybe shorten that time frame a little bit. I think so. Then you might want to get with somebody who, who knows a little bit about kind of what they're doing. And other people have said so. And you know someone's onto something. You know it when other people are hating on that person. You know Donald Trump's onto something when a whole bunch of shitheads are hating on them. You just know it, right? Okay. You know that I might be onto something when you hear some negative press out there. <laughs> you got so many people that are jealous. And if I investigated a couple of these people from time to time, you notice a lot of times they have nothing. Zero. Zilch. It's either a fake account by another teacher who is jealous of what I'm able to do and jealous of my success and track record, or it's a player that uh, maybe tried to, um, you know, pull down their pants and take a big crap on me and um, I smacked them really good. And they go on around crying to people about, oh, Kurt hurt my feelings. He said some bad stuff. He's a jerk. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that person can't play. And if he took a crap on me, you better bet I'd give him a little bit of this. Bam, 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 bam. Just like Trump does to the shithead Dems that constantly tried to irritate him. 
sometimes referred to as the Donald Trump of Trumpet. I am Kurt Thompson. I hope that you enjoy this tutorial. And if you and I never see each other, then you know it's going to take you about seven to eight years, which is still not horrible, to get to that double C. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.